my name is Jill Haug. And just a brief background, I have worked at the Transportation Institute for um, 25 years, starting as a graduate research assistant. And then uh, during the time went out and got my PhD, took a leave and, and did that. And also did some work in Washington, DC with the Federal Transit Administration. So my primary focus over the last 12 years has been public transportation. The prior, I've done some work in economic development and transportation and logistics, and uh, really found a passion for public transportation. And about a year ago, I uh, went to Florida. It was, it was a really tough job in February to go to Florida and spend a week with John Maxwell. And uh, have any of you heard of John Maxwell at all before? OK. Um, well. It's good, new crowd here. Um, John Maxwell is a, a leadership guru. He's written about 80 books on leadership. And you may have heard of one of them called the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Oftentimes, people may not remember his name, but they've heard of that book. And uh, I highly recommend it. If you have not read it yet, it's a, it's a very good um, basic that you can work on your entire life. <laughs> you know, we can always become better at, um, at leadership. So one of the things that uh, his primary area is leadership. But with that, he talks so much about how relationships, I mean, if you're going to be in leadership, leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less is what he says. So I do want to ask also, when you were a child, so think back. What did you want to be when you grew up? Did you want to be a traffic engineer? Did you want to be a singer? Did you want to be an uh, Olympic athlete, president, um, actor, actress? What did you want to be? <laughs> OK, OK. Well, everyone has different, different things. But oftentimes, when you ask you know, somebody you know, what they want to be a singer, or a movie star, or a, a fireman, um, What's that? A cowboy. OK, OK, a cowboy. OK. Well, <laughs> oftentimes people look to somebody else that they saw. And that was kind of what they wanted to become because they saw that person. And that person had some influence over that young person or over yourself. Um, so oftentimes, if you think about, do you want to have influence? Do you want to be able to? persuade people to do something, do you want to lead them so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish, so that you can become more successful, or that you can add value to people? So leadership, one thing I, John Maxwell says over and over and over, and I like that it's, it's a concept to really remember, is that leadership is influence. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. And we're going to go through. Um, Oftentimes, people have an idea that you have to be the CEO to be the leader. And that's not true. So our goal, you're here today. Well, maybe it's because you're getting credit. I understand that. But you hopefully had some interest in increasing your influence. And so with that, you're going to want to increase your leadership as well. Again, I, I do want to emphasize, I hope that you would consider reading the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. So let's take an inventory. Who do you influence? Right now, think about who is it that you influence? Is it your peers, other students? If you're teaching, are you influencing your students? So do you, do you kind of have a little mental idea with a few people that you're influencing? OK. So, there's seven ways that people really go about influencing. We're going to quick cover those. We won't spend a lot of time because we're going to get to some ways to improve the influence. But how do you influence others? Do you do it by force? OK, you know, you have to do this. So you're influencing them. But how long are they really going to listen to you? Only while they have to, right? OK, so as soon as the job is done, they're out of there, hopefully to never see you again. OK, through intimidation. It's my way or the highway. It's one of the ways that happens. Manipulation. There's a winner and a loser. Position. OK. 
We will follow you because we have to follow you. No other reason. We have to do it. Exchange. Okay, you both win. I'm gonna, you know, let's work together. I'm gonna follow you because I'm gonna gain something and we're both gonna gain something. So I'll follow you. Persuasion. Does that happen? Somebody can persuade you to follow them? There's a reason. But right here. How do you influence others? Do you do it from respect? That because somebody follows you because they respect you. Ultimately, I think this is one of the main reasons we want to have, have influence, is because people actually respect us. Quick, how many do you influence? Okay, so I mentioned, you know, do you influence Here's an example of a mom, you know, influencing a little child. And then, of course, we have some of these people who we're not going to spend a lot of time on, but we have some of these movie stars and people who influence a lot of others. And uh, I think a, one thing to think about, too, is how many do you influence, and are you influencing them for good or for bad? Are you influencing them for positive? or negative results. Why do you influence people? This is something that's so key. And when I think about you going out, you know, as students, you're going to be going out into the workforce and particularly with the graduate degrees that you have, you're going to become leaders. And you're going to have the technical knowledge. I think it's so important to be sure to work on the person skills and the leadership skills, because you will be moving most likely. Okay, some people may say, well, no, I don't want to move into a higher position. I want to stay and do this, and I don't want to interact with any people. Rarely will that ever happen. You will interact with people, and it's nice to be able to have some people's skills. One of the key things, too, is trust. You want to be able to influence people, but they want to do it for good. People want to be able to trust you. You want to be a trustworthy person. And again, try to influence people for the good. Okay, where do you influence others? You're doing it right now at the university is one of the places. Well, doesn't this look like this room? <laughs> uh, yeah. So where do you, where do you do it? Um, again, I want to emphasize, it's not, you don't wait until you're the CEO, the CFO, um, the president of the university. You don't wait till then. You, as a graduate student right now, or faculty, are influencing people. But what are some ways to improve the ways you influence so that people can recognize you as a leader? Integrity. Having integrity. Think about somebody that you know, and when you first meet them, you know, you can think, okay, well, this is a good person, but it really takes over time for you to see, wow, okay, they said they were going to do this, and they did it. They did this. It's kind of like you see somebody grow, and you can think somebody has integrity, but it's really proven over time. So um, Webster's. New Universal on a Bridge Dictionary describes integrity as an adherence to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, and honesty. So oftentimes, people will be influenced by what, what you say because they see that you're a person of integrity. So one of the things I also want to point out is when we go through this, the 10 ways to increase your influence, if you're taking notes, you can write the word influences down the left, and integrity is the first word there. Nurture. OK, so does somebody influence you if they're bossy and telling you what to do? You know, you sometimes don't really want to do what, they, what they're telling you to do. But somebody who tends to be more nurturing, let's say there's a new student who comes in and doesn't really know their way around, and you jump in and you help them and you show them the ropes, you're influencing them because you're nurturing part 
is helping to influence them. That's just one example and something that you can probably all relate to being here with new students. Okay, faith. So this can be a way that, how many of you had somebody believe in you? Almost every, almost everybody in here close to it, in the sense it can be, you may not quite know that you can do something, you wanna do it, you might be a little fearful, but if somebody comes and shows faith in you, you know, I know you can do that. I know you can finish your PhD. I know you can do this. Now, not just blindly um, with somebody who has no skills and they come in as a freshman and you're saying, well, I know you can go get your PhD. You know, that's not it. But the sense of having faith and believing in you, so you increase your influence when you have faith in someone. Does that make sense? Okay. Also, listening. Okay, think of it as a ladder. Do you like it when somebody listens to you? Or do you prefer when they ignore you when you're talking? Okay, look at the speaker. Doesn't that show that you're listening when you actually look at them? Ask questions. Make sure that shows that you're paying attention. Don't interrupt. I don't know if you have anyone interrupt you when you're speaking. But don't change the subject. See how this is a ladder. Emotion. Make sure also as a leader, you, you kind of understand what's going on in the situation. Responsive listening. I mean, when you know that somebody's listening to you, you tend to um, engage with them. If somebody quits listening to you, they're not being very responsive, you just kind of go your own way. So the best thing, focus on the other person. Another is to understand. So if you can't understand people, it's going to be really hard to work with them. And so one of the things that we find, too, at a university is the cultural differences. And so that makes it very unique when you have to work more or you can accomplish more when you work together to better understand one another. And the leader takes that initiative to understand the people around them. Trying to see things from their perspective. That's a, it's something that hopefully you're doing already, but it can be, and it's a skill to work on. How can you look at something from somebody else's perspective? A leader also enlarges others. So if you want to increase your influence, grow yourself. That's what you're doing right now. Here at the university, you are growing yourself, and most of the skills that you're probably learning are the technical skills, which are crucial for your career. I also suggest that in addition to continuing to grow in those technical skills, or learn some of the other skills, the leadership skills, the interpersonal skills, and continue to grow in them. You can't just say, well, you know what? I took this leadership class, I'm good. I'm good for the whole rest of my life. I don't need to learn anything else, you know, but grow. Because when you grow yourself, you are able to grow others. You can't give what you don't have, right? So um, another book that I want to mention that is probably one of my absolute favorites of John Maxwell's is The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. It will change your life. And one of the reasons is because now you're in the university, so you take classes, you have a curriculum, you finish it, right? Okay, very good. People do that. But do you have a plan for when you finish school? Do all of a sudden, do you quit growing? Some people do. Some people never pick up another book. Some people choose to be like, I'm good, I graduated, I'm done. And there's so much more when you continue to grow. And when you see other leaders, they're people who grow, they're people who read the people who stay, stay ahead on things. Navigation. Navigates, okay. So if you have a problem, is there somebody that you may go to that can help you through the situation? Maybe somebody who's been through that before. That's somebody who has experience. Maybe it's even somebody who knows somebody. You know, well, I'm gonna listen to this person and what they have to say because you know what? They're really close to John Maxwell, and I think John Maxwell's really great. 
but I've talked to him, but they really know him. You know, there's, there's people that you can look to, and what I'm encouraging you to do is as you have your experiences as well, you can help other students, you can help other people, you can help them navigate through the system, and that also increases your influence. So we also have connects. Okay, so do you like to work with people that you connect with? Yes? Do, I mean, do any of you like to work with people you don't connect with? I know I don't, and I don't look forward to it. So one of the things, too, to think about is how can you connect with people? Taking the leader tends to take the initiative in, okay, how can I create a relationship with this person? You know, you, you think it through. How can I connect with them? I see that they're going through, the, and so I can, I can help them through this. I mean, that's kind of the navigation part, too, but you also have to connect with them, talk with them. Do you, are these skills that you feel that you've worked at at all, or do you ever find it difficult to connect with people? Not that you're going to connect with everybody, with leadership being influence. And so um, the, most of the things I'm talking about, and I'm going to throw in other stuff because I've read a lot of John Maxwell's books, but here is the book, um, Becoming a Person of Influence. And one thing I want to say, I'm going through the material really, really fast because this is really an eight-hour workshop <laughs> or more. And what I'm trying to do is at least give, me, give you a preview and go through those ten items so that you can keep them in your mind you know, think through influences. Okay, I need to have integrity. I need to have nurture. I need to, you know, a quick way. This, we can spend an hour easily unpacking each of these items and still have a lot more to talk about. Um, at NDSU, I do some what's called masterminds, and there'll be people who sign up, and they've filled up in less than two hours, three classes, and we go through a book, and we spend an hour each week discussing the topic and unpacking it, and how is this relating to you, and, it, and it's really good. So. I encourage you, if you can pick up these books and spend some time in it, it's really well worth it. But um, growing in leadership, one of, the, one of the processes that they do is there's this little quiz. And you can try to find out where are you in your leadership, you know, and you'll score between a, a 1 and a 10. And uh, there's questions. And, and it's interesting to go through it at the beginning and then go through it later. And what they'll call it is having a leadership lid. So think about a lid going on something, you know, on a, on a pot. And so they'll talk about, okay, you know, my leadership skills, I'm like a two. Well, the nice thing to know is that you don't have to stay at that level, but there's different ways and practices that you can work on improving those skills. And that's, um, that's really good, and it's good for you to learn now because it's something you can work on through your career. So connecting with people. Now, because of that, you may have, it's a little bit easier for you, your leadership skills may be higher at, you know, there's several things, but that, it might be at a seven, might be at a six, might be at an eight, where somebody who has a harder time connecting, their leadership skills may be lower, but it doesn't mean they have to stay there. You can work at trying to figure out, how can I connect with somebody? What is that that we have in common? And how can I work with them? Also empowers. Do you like to work with somebody who lets you go off and do things? Or do you want somebody to look over your shoulder all the time to make sure you're doing it correct? That's what you like? <laughs> now, there's, there's some people who, who want somebody continuously checking on them. I'm suspecting that because you are graduate students, you tend not to be that way. Um, I could be wrong, but those that I've worked with have shown me they'd like to kind of run and do things. And a big thing is, is to be able to empower people. So we can't do everything ourselves. Think if you're working on a group project with other students and you're the lead, you know, typically you will have a lead. You'll want to hopefully 
empower others to go and, okay, you take care of the data, you take care of this, and let's all come back together. You're empowering people to do what they're good at or to improve their skills in certain areas. We can't do everything ourselves. We want to accomplish more, and so one of the ways to do that is to empower people to work on other projects. So um, just like in a business where there's the CFO, the CEO, I mean, they all kind of specialize. They can't do everything. That's why they have others working. Okay, so we went through, this is the 10th now, reproduces. So, do you know that 80% of leaders attract followers? That makes sense? They just, they just bring along people, attract people who are going to do the work. It's okay. We need to get the work done. So, but, so as you're thinking about improving your leadership and your influence, who are you influencing? Who are some of the people that you're influencing? Are you influencing those people who are just going to come along and you say, you know, I need you to collect this data, so collect this data. Okay. And they'll collect the data. They don't do anything else, but they collect the data. There can also be, so leaders, 10% of leaders attract other leaders. So if you have, you have your leadership skills, so now you attract somebody who collects the data, but they also take a little bit of extra initiative and go, look what I did with the data. Look at what this is saying. Look what this is showing. They're showing a little bit more leadership, taking a little bit more initiative. Are those the kinds of people that you want to surround yourself with? And then this is very interesting, is 5% of leaders produce leaders. And so what I would hope to suggest to you is as you're working on your skills, on your influencing skills, on your leadership skills, keep in mind who do you want to attract? Who do you want to influence? Do you want to influence somebody who's just going to get the job done? You know, they're just going to do it. Are you going to show your skills in the sense of connecting with them? helping them, showing your integrity, or you just say, go collect that data, go administer that survey. You know, no, you want to influence them, take them along on the trip with you. Work at, I see it as becoming, do professors want to bring along and encourage, it can be other professors, um, it can be people who they can see something in a student who will grow continue to grow, continue to grow. Yeah, um, you know, one of the things is particularly, it can be because of your style, and you can recognize other leaders and bring those other leaders around who want to be leaders, um, you're going to find that's who's going to mostly be surrounding you. Um, there will be, and you know what, we need followers. We, we need followers, and so I'm not saying, you know, don't, don't attract followers, because we need that but also be looking for those other people. Um, John Maxwell, one of the things he really talks about, and he started the John Maxwell team. That's what I'm, I'm part of that group um, back in 2011. And one of the reasons was he wanted to focus on creating other leaders. And so taking an actual initiative towards, okay, let's start creating and be, um, doing this in another way. At his, at one of his businesses, he's, he, uh, before he got there, he was, for those um, who, John Maxwell was, uh, before he, gosh, he's been doing this the last 20 some years, but prior to that, he was a pastor. And in the church that he was at, he would talk about, he went and he took over like the 10th largest church in the US in San Diego. And when he went to that, that location, it was made up the, the pastor there had been uh, a really good singer. And so there were, a, it was really known for its music, okay, because that's what it started to attract. Well, then John's gift is not music or singing. So he said by the time, so when he went in and took it over, by the time he left, it was full of leaders because he attracted leaders. Long way to answer your question. Okay. So increasing your influence. Here's one of the things that wanted to make sure, um, again, 
each of these hour long or more. But having integrity, really working on, you know, catching yourself if you feel that, wow, I'm doing something that won't show integrity. Or um, I'm, I'm developing a class that I'm going to actually be teaching next semester at NDSU, and it's called Leadership Ethics and Academic Conduct. And so and I've done some training on ethics. And I take the class through ways to identify different, different tests. And so I'll say, OK, if you don't want it on the front page of the paper, don't do it. If you don't want your mom to know, don't do it. OK, so that's kind of the easy check um, for integrity. Nurture. You know, how can you be more nurturing? And again, you know, think of it as helping people. How can I help someone who, who needs this help? How can I help a fellow student come in? Faith. How can I show faith in someone to help them along who may have a lower self-esteem or someone who thinks they can't do it? Um, how can I show them? How can I be a better listener? How can I really listen? Because so many times, people want to be listened to. How can I do that? Understand. How can I have a better understanding? Instead of just worrying about me and what I want to do, as a leader and influence, you need to understand people. What motivates them? How can you, um, and not to manipulate, but to understand, again, to try to help. Enlarge. How can I enlarge people? How can I, I'm going to continue to grow as a person so that I can grow other people and influence them? I'm going to navigate. How can I navigate? I see this person having this, this problem over here. I've been down that road, or I know somebody else has been down that road, and I can help them. I can help them navigate through this situation. I can connect with people. I need to work at connecting with people. How can I connect with them so that we can have a better project? Find the common interest. Um, empower. How can I help? You know, you, you work on this. I'm going to work on this. We'll get it done together. And reproducing others. So um, that one is a, really a lifelong process, I think, at the end. You guys are probably experiencing that a whole lot more now with the work that you've been doing and being professors longer. Um, <laughs> first started out. Okay. Well, thank you.